Hey, it's Rick here, and this is the weekly wrap that almost didn't happen just because there's so much stuff that took place this past week between work and E3 and the Worldwide Developer Conference. So if you didn't know, I was at E3 this week on Tuesday and Wednesday. Uh, flew out to LA and I'm back now and uh, saw a lot of good stuff there. Uh, Worldwide Developer Conference, just real fast here. Uh, we saw new Mac Pros. The black cylinder looks really, really slick. And it also looks like a spot where your cat can sleep. So be on the lookout for that. Um, I saw an image already depicting that and I thought that was pretty funny. Uh, but probably going to be about 3000 bucks is my guess. Um, just pricing right around the same price as the Mac Pros are today. So out of my price range, but man, that is a beautiful piece of technology. Um, and then we also heard about iOS 7. Uh, I really like it. I know some people are already complaining about it, but I like it a lot from what I've seen. I'm excited about some of the improvements that they've made, especially with how you can categorize your photos. Uh, that'll make life easier for me. Uh, but I'm going to wait until the final version comes out because developer copies are always buggy. They tend to crash and they tend to reduce your battery life. So uh, I'll wait for the final uh, version to come out, which will be in the fall which coincides with, in my opinion, the release of the next iPhone and probably iPad or iPad mini. Uh, if history repeats itself, Apple will announce that those devices are going to ship alongside of iOS 7. They'll come pre-installed with iOS 7, and there you have it. So that's my kind of estimation on what we're going to see happen there. Airport Extreme was also announced, a new Airport Extreme supporting the new Wi-Fi uh, AC channel. Um, which is being used on some of the newer Mac products now. Uh, and who knows, maybe we'll see it on Wi-Fi for the iPhone or the iPads later this year. Probably pick one of those up at some point down the road. I have an Airport Extreme now that works just fine for me. So uh, I don't want to plop down 200 bucks for one without time capsule. So I'll wait, uh, but I do want to get one at some point. Now, E3 is where I spent most of my time. Uh, big news, if you guys haven't heard it, which by the way, I'm surprised you haven't if you haven't, and that's PS4 versus Xbox One. Uh, the big deal here, of course, is price and the whole privacy DRM licensing issue. Now, let me run it down real quick for you. PS3, their base price coming out of the gate, $399. I just said PS3, I mean PS4. Uh, $399. Um, your Xbox One is going to be $499. So right off the bat, everybody's saying, ah, oh, Sony's already $100 cheaper. Well, here's the thing. If you want to get the PS4 with a camera, remember Xbox One includes Kinect, that's their camera, you're going to have to spend $59 more, so the gap is actually a little bit smaller than what it appears to be. It's only about a $40 difference. Now, in my opinion, the good news is because Sony's not including a camera, uh, maybe that means they're not going to rely so heavily on the camera for games. And I'll tell you the truth here. I've had Kinect since day one for my Xbox 360. I don't use it that often. My kids use it, but I don't use it that often. And even when they use it, they're not using it extensively. So we'll see with the next gen, but I'm more of a controller guy. So uh, camera, no camera, whatever. Um, of course, the DRM and the privacy issue, that's a big deal for a lot of people. And it kind of strikes a chord with me as well. Xbox, well, we all know the story there. They're indicating that used games... Uh, you have some restrictions there. They leave it up to developers. There might be a fee if you try to buy or sell or things like this. Uh, of course, their online strategy is for the Xbox One, you've got to have that thing connected uh, to the internet at least once every 24 hours or basically you can't use the system or your games. And PS4 and Sony came out in their press briefing and just bam, hit Microsoft right in the gut on a number of occasions. They talked about you know what? We don't care. Do what you want with your games. And they had a promotional video that came out, which was pretty humorous, but also another jab at Microsoft that said, here's how you sell or how you uh, hand off or transfer your used games. And they cut over to a picture of just handing the game over. So uh, that's the first thing. Of course, their online strategy is you don't have to be connected. You can play it offline if you want to. Uh, and of course we don't have a camera issue where that thing's always on. Although Microsoft says, we promise our camera is just listening for you to say Xbox on. So man, they're taking a weird approach with this one, I'll tell you. And, and I don't like the sarcasm, if I may say, coming out of Microsoft with their recent comment of, if you don't like a console that's always on, we have a solution for you and it's called the Xbox 360. It just seems kind of uh, snarky to me, if I can say. Anyways, 
This is far from over, guys. There's people saying the console war is over. That's ridiculous. It hasn't even begun. Uh, there's plenty of lifespan in these consoles. They haven't even begun yet. And we got a long way to go before we see what happens. I will say this, from a consumer perspective, PS4 is looking a lot nicer right now. Uh, that's for sure. Uh, a lot more friendly to the gamers and also uh, their outward appearance to indie developers is a lot nicer as well. You saw that in their press conference where they had all the indie developers lined up and they kind of showed that. And then also on the show floor, they had a big banner, We Heart uh, Devs or Indies or something like that. I've got some video that I'll show here of it. Uh, so, you know, PS4, Sony's really playing it up to the consumer and the gamer. Microsoft is kind of taking more of, if I might say, a corporate kind of approach, which mm, it's not going to fly with the gaming community. So we'll see how they pull out of this one. Um, I don't think it's over, though, not by a long shot. So a lot of good stuff on the E3 show floor. Uh, Skylander Swap Force. I know that is a big game in my family, the Skylanders and Skylander Giants. And uh, man, I was so lucky to snag one of these guys. You had to spin a wheel and after about three tries, I finally got the E3 edition of Hot Dog. My kids all want to play with this guy, and uh, I'll probably let him play with them at some point. He's the same as all the other hot dogs, but uh, he's got this really cool paint job on him. So a uh, big Skylander family here. And Swap Force is pretty slick because you can swap out the guys uh, at their torso and mix up powers and things like that. Uh, Disney Infinity. Hey, don't mistake these two games. They're not direct competitors. After I was able to speak with the developers over uh, at Disney Interactive and talk about this game, it's very different. Uh, you may think it's the same because they have figures like Skylanders, but it's really different, and that game's going to be a lot of fun. So be sure to check out my playlist here on E3 2013. I got a lot of coverage that will be either posted there or coming soon as I can get my hands on the editing machine and pop more stuff on the channel. I will be doing that. Lots of other stuff to talk about that I just don't have time in this video. Of course, Halo and all this other stuff. By the way, I know I'm going to get the question, which console am I going to buy both? There it is. Uh, I save up in advance in anticipation for these things. And I'm going to buy both. Uh, the thing is, is I like my exclusive titles. So Halo is an example on uh, Xbox One and things like Gears of War and whatnot over on the PS4. So uh, there you have it. Now, if somebody asked me which one should you buy, it's too soon to tell. If you have to have one at launch and I had to answer right now, I'd probably say PS4. Uh, but I still think it's too early to tell. So there you have it. That's my weekly wrap for this week. No question of the week, nothing like that. Like I said, this is just kind of thrown out there. Uh, some initial impressions. If you guys have questions, comments, or feedback, always leave them down below. Better yet, if you guys really want a response quick, hit me up on Twitter. I am always on uh, Twitter and I will respond pretty quick over there. So if you got questions about E3, what I saw, maybe you want to know a little bit more, whatever else, hit me up. It's at Metagamers. And I will be talking to you next week. Take care, everybody, and have fun.